In this video, we're going to answer the question how to use config and setup in a bar chart in Chart.js. So what we're really going to do here is we have the basic bar chart here and we have all of this code. But Chart.js is moving to a new kind of setup, basically where you have the, the config and setup block and eventually a render block as well, having three different blocks where you have the JavaScript in there. So right now you can see here, this here below is the default setting, but let's break this down and convert this into the structure that Chart.js is moving to, especially if you watch the samples, you'll start to get confused because this is different than what you see in many of the samples. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this. We're going to start working on that. So we're going to just paste this in here, and this is just a default bar chart. I'm going to grab the bar chart here proper indentation here and then what I want to do here is I want to add up the uh, CDN basically or this specific link here let's click on that for copied and put it here just above because the, all the codes here are dependent on this all right what I'm going to do in here I'll just put here a quick diff so we can avoid the uh, or we can control the size of the chart because if you don't do this chart JS or the canvas ID or the canvas specifically can scale into infinity which creates all kind of errors that we don't want all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to give it a style and i'm going to give the style tag here and this is our class that's a style here i'll call it the chart box which is a quite common term i tend to use and i'll say here chart box width and the width will be 700 pixels so with 700 pixels all right and save this once we save this go back here there you are we have now our bar chart but all right let's convert this into a structure that's very similar to here so if you see here the getting started you get here the setup and the config and that's what i want to do so how do we uh, convert this into the structure that we want all right to understand this we have three different blocks here block one will be your setup block which is the number one you always need to show Afterwards, we have the config block, which, which has all the configurations. And finally, you will have your render block. And basically, the render block is a term I'm using. It's not officially in here, but the render block is to render the chart. So it's probably the most appropriate one. All right, so how do we break all of this down? Well, it's quite simple. First of all, we look at the setup block. So what is in the setup block? Basically, the setup block contains all the values that we will have here related to the data so basically in here you will get the labels and the data set basically everything in here will be our setup block so what we can do here is very straightforward we say a constant and a constant is data and data equals put in here all the data that we have so we just grab all this i don't use this here why because we already have this here so it will understand what it is we just grab all of this let's see here just to make sure we have everything this is as you can see this will be our uh, this is an ending point this is a starting point here so just cut this out paste this in here all right that's the first one once we have that semicolon here all right it jumps here a bit we can do it like this this is probably not the right um, indentation but it's all right for now i don't want to adjust it too much so the next one will be, well, let's assume we just continue on here. The next one will be, of course, a config. And the configuration contains all of the configuration items related to, to the most important parts here, which is the type, the data, the options. So basically here, type, data, and options. So in here, all we have to do here is say here, constant, and then say config, for configuration equals, and then curly braces, and then here, semicolon, then in here between, we're going to put in the data and the information that we need. So first of all, we will use the type, because why? We have a type in here, we want to specify the specific type, which is part of the configuration. All right, so we have that one now. As you can see, it's basically outside of this here. If we delete this, this would be, we have the type we have, all right, and we have the option, and of course, as well, the data. So why the data? The data here is basically all of this here of the above uh, where am i here sorry of the above and the reason why is basically this this is what you call the micro level 
where you have all of the specifications of all the values, etc., etc. This will be dependent on whatever is in here because we will use here this data. Then we put in a comma, and the data is a constant value of data. That's this one here, which recognize that this will contain all of these values here. And next, which is the final one, is any of the options. And in the options, we could put in here the specific ones. For example, in our case here, this part. Let's cut this out, paste this in here. All right, give this a proper indentation. Let's put this here slightly better. All right, got that here. Now, now we have all of this. We can delete everything. And now we can work on the final part, which is the render block. So we're going to put in here the render block. And basically, the render block is rendering the entire chart. So what are we going to put in here? Well, basically, we're going to create a constant. And this constant is my chart. Why my chart? Oh, we just we will uh, connect with this part here with the ID. And I tend to use the same name, which is probably the best way to do it so you don't get confused and then we say here new and then we say here chart capital C and in here we're going to put in the items so what we're going to put in here it's very straightforward we have this here but then we say here document dot get element by ID and then in here we can indicate my chart so once we have this, we're almost done because we can skip this one here. The reason why we can skip this because Chart.js now allows you to put it in here. Let's double check. They have it somewhere in here, if I'm not mistaken. Integration, installation. Let's double check here if it shows. Doesn't show here. Um, no, I cannot find it. They have it before any documentation. Maybe it's in the configuration basics. Uh, no, not really. However, it shows that this can be ignored now. This is optional. If you want to put it in, fair enough. But this is a very optional way, so no need to do that. So once we have this one, then the next part is let's make sure here's a comma. And then we say here config for the configuration. And once we have all of this, we can remove this here. And now we can save this and see what happens. If we refresh it, there you are. We have exactly the same chart. Oh, exactly the same chart, except that it has a different setup. This setup is called basically the config or config setup with three separate blocks. The setup block, we have the config block and of course the rendering block. Make sure you put it in this exact order and the reason why is the setup block is the one that is basically the micro level. Meaning it contains all the constant variables and the specifications here. We could even do here constant and say here the following one, let's put in this here. I'll say your constant labels equals this, and then you would just basically cut that out, put it in here, we can say here, it will be the constant labels. If I save this now, everything is same. There you are, red, if I put in red one, if I save that here as well, pay attention here, red number one, all right. So what happens basically here, you can put in all the variables you have. Then you can specify the variables in the data basically in the data or the data set in all of the data here which is the setup and then what happens is where we have the config afterwards the config block indicates basically the configuration but also has the three core parts which is the type the data and the options and the data of course is a constant which covers this one here so this is first being specified and then we can implement this in here and this part will be then implemented here or basically this refers to this part here which is the meso level which is the secondary level and finally on the top level which is what we call the macro level is this one here because this here contains the config and the config contains the data and everything in here this refers to here and then we are here referring to that so i hope you can see the level of uh, connectivity here basically maybe uh, what i can better say is this or this entire part here is dependent on whatever is in here this has to be specified and this one or this has a dependency with or relationship with this here and this has a relationship or dependency with all of these here above so without so making sure that always the setup block loads first then the config and finally the render block very very important once you understand this you can start to convert your chart 
which is quite commonly set up in a basic JavaScript, converted into this new structure that the chart.js documentation is moving towards, which is quite interesting. But I always recommend go back to basics first. Why? Understand how you're doing the basics. Once you understand that, doing all these other adjustments, as you can see here, is not that different. It's just a different structure, but the logic is exactly the same. So don't get confused by it, by making it look more fancy. Just understand the basics. If you understand the basics, going advanced is always easier. So that's my biggest advice I can give you right now. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.